When you think of a city, you probably think of a sprawling metropolis home to millions of people. London, Shanghai, New York, Rio, Tokyo, Paris, Mumbai, Sydney. Even in Ireland, it's the title reserved for the largest and most important settlements like Dublin, Belfast, Cork and Galway. However, sometimes a city doesn't fit this image. Sometimes it has a smaller population than many towns and is called a city for historical or religious reasons. One such example is the city of Armagh in Northern Ireland. So why is Armagh a city and does it deserve to be one? Armagh City is located in the centre west of County Armagh in the south of Northern Ireland and is home to around 15,000 people. It is the smallest city in Northern Ireland and the island of Ireland and it's the fifth smallest city by population in the UK. First of all, if you haven't seen it, I'd highly recommend you watch my County Armagh Explained video if you want to learn more about the county Armagh is the capital of. To decide whether Armagh deserves to be a city or not, let's examine its history and jump back in time to its beginning. The first settlement around the modern day city was the ancient pagan site of Aman Maka, named after the Celtic goddess of Maka. This served as the capital of Ulster until it was abandoned in around the 1st century. In the 3rd century, another settlement was established on a nearby hill. This settlement was also named after the goddess being called Oid Vaka or Maka's Heish. This was the origin of the city, now called Oima. Skip forward another 200 years and a young man from Roman Britain was kidnapped by pirates and brought to Ireland as a slave. He spent six years as a shepherd and turned to prayer. After dreaming of a ship racing for him, he fled home, but he later returned to Ireland to spread Christianity to the Irish people. This man's name was Mayor in Suckish, better known as St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland. In 445 AD, Patrick founded a church in Armagh and proclaimed it to be the holiest church in Ireland. It is said that when building his stone church on Oid Vaca, Patrick disturbed a doe which ran away, leaving its foin behind. He then picked up the foin and returned it to its mother on an adjacent hill. As he returned the baby deer, the saint announced that one day a great church would stand on this site. Foreshadowing! After the foundation of St. Patrick's Cathedral, Oid Vaca continued to grow as a monastic city of saints and scholars. It became the seat of the Archbishop of Armagh, Primate of Royal Ireland, successors to St. Patrick being the most important bishop in the country. Armagh became the ecclesiastical or religious capital of Ireland. In 1014, the legendary High King of Ireland, Brian Beru, was killed at the Battle of Clontarf and was buried at Armagh Cathedral. Due to its sacred importance, by 1226, Aima was calling itself a city, even though it never had a royal treasure granting it the title. Over the following centuries, Aima suffered through many wars and attacks by Vikings, Normans, the O'Neills of Tyrone and the English. Following the Nine Years' War, which was an Irish rebellion against the British, Aima lay in ruins and under Henry VIII, the cathedral was transferred to the Protestant Church of Ireland. To prevent further Irish rebellions, King James I organised the plantation of Ulster. Beginning in 1609, land was taken from the native Catholic Irish and given to Protestant English and Scottish settlers. This led to tension between both communities. The city's educational function enjoyed, with the foundation of the Royal School in 1608, St. Patrick's College in 1834, Armagh Public Library in 1771, the Armagh Observatory in 1790 and Ireland's oldest county museum in 1937. The observatory was part of a plan to make Armagh a university city but this never happened. After a failed rebellion in 1798, Ireland was made fully a part of the United Kingdom. The new rulers decided that Armagh's size meant that it should no longer be a city and in 1840 its city corporation was abolished. However, many continue to call Armagh a city throughout the following decades. After Catholic emancipation and the relaxation of the penal laws which persecuted Catholics, 
Archbishop William Crowley became the first Catholic bishop to reside in Aymar in 300 years. And soon Aymar would return to being the capital of Christianity in Ireland for Catholics as well as Protestants. From 1840, a new Catholic cathedral began construction on a neighbouring hill to the original Church of Ireland one. This hill was also said to be where St Patrick returned the foreign to its mother. This impressive structure with twin 64 metre spires was completed in 1904. Also named St Patrick's Cathedral, Armagh is one of few cities in the world which is home to two cathedrals of the same name. After the Act of Union, nationalism continued to grow in the native Irish, culminating in the War of Independence from 1919 to 1921. However, many in Ulster, mostly Protestants, wanted to maintain the union with Britain. Ireland was partitioned with the South gaining independence, while six Protestant majority counties of Ulster would remain in the UK as Northern Ireland. In Northern Ireland, tensions between the nationalist and unionist communities erupted into 30 years of sectarian violence called the Troubles. These dark times saw many atrocities committed by both sides across Armagh, Northern Ireland and beyond. In 1998, the Good Friday Agreement was signed in Belfast, starting a road to peace in Northern Ireland. In 1994, for the 1550th anniversary of Armagh's foundation by St Patrick, Armagh was granted city status once again by personal request of the Queen. This was also due to its importance in Christianity and recognition of its previous status. Aima District Council was renamed Aima City and District Council in 1995. In 2012, it was given Lloyd Mayalty status, making it the fourth city on the island of Ireland to have the special title, alongside Cork, Dublin and Belfast. After local government reforms in 2015, Aima is now a part of the Aima City Banbridge and Craigavon Borough Council. Today, the Archbishop of Aima continues to be the primate of Royal Ireland in both the Roman Catholic and Church of Ireland churches. Ima may be the size of a town, but being the ecclesiastical capital of Ireland, founded by St Patrick, in my opinion makes it deserve its status as a city. I was inspired to make this video after a recent visit to Ima City. It's not on the main tourist trail in Ireland, but I'd highly recommend a visit. Both cathedrals are very impressive, as is the Georgian architecture of the city. If you haven't seen it, I'd recommend you watch my County Ima Explained video if you want to learn more about the Orchard County. What do you think? Does Ima deserve to be called a city? Have you ever visited Ima? Answer in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've any ideas for future videos, put them in the comment section below. Subscribe to see more videos about Ireland, Europe and the world.